Let's go to North Africa and the Gulf and start with Bahrain, where the monarch recently declared a three-month state of emergency, invited Arab troops in, uh, most of those, Saudi Arabia, crossing the um, the bridge that links Bahrain and Saudi Arabia, and the, the temperatures have been ratcheted up immediately. There have been violent clashes, a couple of deaths at least, and reports of the main hospital in Manama, the capital of Bahrain, being invaded by these largely Saudi forces. Matthew Machowski is a researcher with the Royal United Services Institute in Qatar and joins us on the line from Doha. Matthew, a very good afternoon. Uh, does it seem like a wise move for Bahrain to have invited Arab troops onto their soil? Hello, good afternoon. Um, the move, uh, the very perhaps haste move uh, on the part of Saudi Arabia and the Emirates is, uh, is in a way very not surprising. Uh, it definitely um, follows on the so-called uh, Article Number 5 of the uh, GCC, which is Gulf Corporation Council Mandate, uh, which which claims that uh, any um, any move against uh, any royal family in the region is in a way tantamount to a move uh, against all of them. So not surprising, but um, might it not have unintended consequences? Instead of cooling temperatures down, raising them, instead of preventing violence, increasing the possibility of violence. Uh, indeed, and uh, actually uh, the move uh, which in the region perhaps could be seen as some sort of a fraternal support on the base, on, on, on the part of other GCC countries, uh, on the ground it has been uh, largely met with uh, further discontent and it's uh, certainly aggravated the situation. Uh, we hear today of uh, at least uh, five fatalities on the part of the protesters and um, I have been told uh, that apparently uh, there are as many as three policemen also uh, killed in Manama. And the urban warfare seems to be certainly spreading around the country. Um, you have rightly noted that uh, the main hospital in Manama, along with the um, three very strategic bridges uh, linking Bahraini Airport with the main island, have also been cut off by the military. Because I mean, one very much doubts that the the reasons for the discontent are going to be squashed by military action. Uh, they will continue, and if this military action is is all that the Bahraini government is planning to do, if it's not planning in any way to address the reasons for the discontent, well, then surely we're we're looking possibly at a state of near permanent emergency and near permanent occupation by the military of Bahrain. Um, yes. Uh, at the same time, uh, one very uh, worrying uh, point about the whole situation in Bahrain is that uh, when the uh, protests began on uh, February 14th, uh, they, these protests were mainly um, about uh, further human rights provisions, uh, release of uh, the um, political prisoners. But in time, uh, they have... Uh, changed uh, and taken off the feel of a some sort of a Shia uprising against the Sunni governing establishment, um, a development very likely to have uh, serious repercussions not only for Bahrain but the, the, the entire Gaza and, and the balance of power in the region. Um, that is also the relations between the GCC and Iran, uh, relations um, already quite strained. Um, and the, the Shia population um, in, in Bahrain, uh, which greatly unnum- outnumbers the Sunni uh, governing minority, um, that population is uh, on the ground feared to be very, uh, very much supported by Iran. Um, these reports have been um, denied, uh, both by Iran and, and there was also a, a clear denunciation of, of the of the military invasion by Iraq as well. Um, but, but yes, all these arguments uh, about the involvement of Iran, um, the the. But the action of the military, um, of, of at the moment what we actually call the the Peninsula um, Shield Force, the Jazeera Shield Force, which is a multinational military contingent, 
of the Golf Corporation Council, um, their actions are um, not, uh, I wouldn't say they are likely to, to quieten the situation at all. Because I suppose the GCC will be feeling we need to cut off the head of the snake before it grows. Because if um, if we allow um, something to develop in Bahrain, then who is going to be next? Whereas if we squash it here, then maybe in other Gulf states, also ruled by Sunni monarchs, uh, protesters, potential protesters, might decide to stay at home. Uh, that's very much true. And actually, uh, this a haste situation, I mean, this haste move, especially on the part of Riyadh uh, to um, to support uh, the Bahraini regime and uh, send their uh, military contingent is uh, largely um, it's largely based on their own um, internal issues uh, with their Shia minority uh, that populates the oil rich uh, eastern province. Um, it, we have uh, seen in the past few days um, a number of protests um, staged by the Shia population in, um, in, in a city of Katif on the eastern coast. Um, and the, the, the Riyadh author, authorities, they, they certainly want to um, not, not to provide any further motivation for their um, local Shias. And um, the situation is likely to, uh, to have an effect internally in Saudi Arabia as well. Matthew Machowski, thank you very much indeed. On the line to us from Doha and Qatar.